<laughs> Kitty took the inflatable. <laughs> Look at Greg. <laughs> okay, maybe that was a poor tip. So welcome to the bookends, the in-depth, wait, no. <laughs> Are you, the in-depth you, you book gonna, review you never asked for? <laughs> you guys do the kick -off. yes. I'm Christine. This is the first time reading the series. And Katie, I mean, I read it once and then I skipped it a second time. I'm Michael. I read this book last night. <laughs> uh, and I'm Clayton, and I have not read this book. I actually don't even know what the book is right now. Ass Ass Ends Blade. That's how you spell it. That's Christine. Ass Ends Blade. By Sarah J. Mass. It's five short stories compiled into a prequel. Spoilers. 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 Most of these stories came from her original book called Queen of Glass, which she posted online, which she later adapted into Throne of Glass. Story one is the assassin and the pirate lord. Captain Rolfe. Rolf? She goes with Sam, who's another guy in the guild, and they kind of hate each other, and they got partnered to go on this mission. And they find out that this mission is all about the slave trade, and she's just like, oh, hell no. She decides to free the slaves. She's able to leave the slave escape on the ships. They go and launch some catapults into this giant chain that's keeping all the ships in the bay. Arbrin is pissed and beats her up and then sends her to the Red Desert to train with this ruthless, silent assassins. She's beaten up and then she's sent to go to the Red Desert and while she's waiting for her ship. We meet Yurin, who's just a downer luck healer. So she's working in a bar? Selena's there and basically teaches her self-defense and then gives her a bunch of money to go train at this special healer's tower on the southern continent. The next story is when she goes to the Red Desert. She has to prove herself worthy before she can train with him. She also needs a letter of approval from him before she goes back. He, uh, he teaches her how to be uh, a snake. Asp assassin. And she meets this girl there. Ansel of Briarcliff. She's from the wasteland. A Ansel has this vendetta against this lord that killed her dad and her sister and she, she needs men or assassins to go back and retake her homeland and so she betrays the mute master to this local lord in order to get troops basically selena stops her and saves the mute master and that's how she gets her letter of approval and a bunch of gold she also steals a horse she goes back to ruthfold the gold from the mute master she uses to get her freedom and she also pays off sam's death who the hell Sam? That was her first love. Arabin, the king of assassins, basically tricks her and Sam. He betrays them. He tells her there's some way she can help with the slave trade, and she has to go kill this guy who is to get the slave trade onto the continent. But in reality, he was trying to create this road of safe houses. So she was tricked into thinking this guy was a bad guy, and she killed him. In this fourth story, we also meet Lysandra, who is a courtesan that Arbrin sponsored and he has pitted her against Selena. They have like this little competition kind of going for his attention and affection. The last story, they decided to do one last assassination, get paid and peace out. They have to take a job that no one else wants, which is to kill this notorious crime lord. It's a trap. Sam dies and Selena gets shipped off to a slave camp and the end. I'm going to give it a two out of five because uh, I like two of these five stories and the rest were honestly just not worth it. Actually, I almost want to like give it negative points for the uh, the second story. I thought that this book was going to have, it was the prequel to like her becoming the assassin. But from the very first story, she's already the greatest assassin in the world. I was disappointed by that too. I gave it three and a half. I liked it more than I thought I would. Like, I'm glad that she did short stories. I like the, the order that we read it, even though I hated stopping. If I read this at the beginning, I would have forgotten about all this stuff. Again, I feel like she's just it's more set up. I just want to get to the good part. I gave it a 2.7 out of 5 because I don't like prequels and I don't like short stories. I also was not a fan of Sam, the love interest. Sam as a character is fine and I think he loves Selena, but I think Selena was like, oh, someone actually loves me and they weren't like a great couple. She just hadn't had anyone genuinely care about her in a long time. I felt the relationship was a little cringy. Moves the plot forward and we do meet some interesting characters. Okay, so it was kind of a labor of love like yeah, which of the five it. we liked best let's do it which of the five would you read to your child 
I think I would read the Desert Assassins one to my child because it has some good morals in it and it's the most interesting. Maybe one of the last three. You would read the last two to your kids? <laughs> is, that, is that the prop? Maybe the slave one then. I'd read them the pirate. I would share the Assassin and the Healer because it actually has some real world uh, use. The Crab Maga thing? This oh, would be yeah, very useful. I mean, it's like a boring story, but there's like a page of useful information in there that's just generally good to know. And it's the shortest. Well, I hope someone takes that advice just listening to this podcast. I hope someone does this. The Spice Report, the Weather Report. We just finished up uh, the Assassin's Blade. Going to check in with our uh, weather reporter, Katie. How spicy and hot was this book? Thanks, Michael. Despite spending time in the hottest desert, she did flirt with an assassin and she made out with Sam in a sewer. It was both hot and dirty, but in the wrong way. Uh, for more details, <laughs> go to our field reporter, Christine. Hot and dirty in all the wrong ways. Yeah, very much like why a love story. What? This adds like whole new context to the relationship with Kale and like how she was like really into the closet sex. Like <laughs> for if her first like love experience is in the sewer, it's like all uphill from there. That's another you know, disappointing weather like report, this. guys. What everyone's been waiting for here. Drink, talk, learn, DTL. What should we like make actual drinking rules? Anytime someone hates on Kale. Anytime what someone else? mispronounces a name. Anytime uh, someone uh, cites Wikipedia. If someone has a, a witty comment and if they get screeched, then they have to drink. What's in a name? That's what we call Kale by any other name would still be mispronounced. I thought since we went back to the beginning of the story that I would go back and look into how Sarah J. Mass names her characters. Okay. So I found this interview where Sarah J. Mass talks about how she names her characters. This is her first quote. She's pretty sure Tolkien is thrashing in his grave based on how she names them. So good start there. The first <laughs> method she describes is she goes to baby name sites and she'll look for like a certain culture, like ancient Greece, <laughs> and then just look at charts until something connects. She'll also look up names that have specific meanings relative to the plot. And then she says she has random psyche moments where she'll do like little inside jokes. For example, um, she created a character, Isaac Hale, in another series that was a combination of two hot guys from Teen Wolf. So <laughs> <laughs> first, first, we'll look at how Dorian Javier got his name. Apparently, Sarah J. Mass is a big fan of Gone with the Wind. And the main person is played by Olivia de Havilland. And so in her Queen of Glass, her first book, she named him Dorian de Havillard. So she just switched the N for an R. And then in our book, she dropped the day. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have Selena. Her name is a variation of Selino which is a Greek goddess or demon called the Dark One. Um, Seleno is one of seven <laughs> daughters <laughs> of the Pleiades, um, also known as the Seven Sisters, which is this constellation that's part of the Taurus constellation. So it's over here. Um, and if you would, if you like looking at it drawn, um, then this is where Selene is named after. And it makes sense because the Taurus constellation, I think seems pretty similar to the stag constellation, which she constantly references in the book as it's related to Terrison. Her actual name, Aelin Ashrivert, <laughs> Ash <-Riber -Gulf. laughs> I think that's a drink because I can't pronounce that. If you take the initials, A-A-G, it actually spells fire in Hindu or Urdu, and we know she's the heir of fire, so significant, maybe. The name Aylin means of the moon in Turkish. I don't know if this one doesn't make a lot of sense, so I don't know if that's real. Aylin with an I means noble in Irish, and she has used Irish names other, where, other places in her books, so that might have been intentional. And then the actual word Aylin means lake, in Tolkien's language, Sindarin. And we obviously already know that she 
references Tolkien because she said he'd be rolling over in his grave. So maybe she picked Lake because it references that drop of water magic that Aelin has. Next, everyone's favorite, Kale Westfall. Um, <laughs> Sarah J. Mass said that when she was 16, she started writing this story and she wanted Kale's name to be Chaos, but it was too Final <laughs> Fantasy. So she switched the S to an L to be Kale. And she said, everyone should be able to make that jump, right? Like, obviously it's spelled like chaos, but with an L. So you should be able to pronounce it Kale. Um, and mm -hmm. clearly that is not true. Let's see if this plays. Kyle, Kale, ch Kale. <laughs> it's Kale. <laughs> <laughs> She has this story where she says not even her husband can get his name right. Um, she'll be like, it's kale, two syllables. And he goes, kale. And she's like, no, it's like not the vegetable. It's kale. And he'll just go, kale. <laughs> uh, so she gets I've, it. I've no been one... pronouncing it like that this whole time. I thought it was kale. <laughs> That's right. It's vegetable. Kale. 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 Um, kale. Interesting. There are some other ways it's pronounced. So kale, like the vegetable, um, could be kill Westfall, <laughs> the murderer. Um, I personally like kale as a compass, kale, Eastfall, Westfall, Northfall, Southfall. <laughs> like the Hunger Games would be Gale Westfall. If you bought him BOGO style, sail Westfall. <laughs> or... <laughs> Does Kale play sports? Or yeah, he's like Kale Westfall. Does he, he text? text? No, Kale West calls. What is is Kale from the South? Kale West. <laughs> this is going off the rails. What, are, what is going on? <laughs> oh, Kale these West, are just... <laughs> I like West Ball. West Ball. Ball love. Uh, so yeah, that, any questions? <laughs> uh, P.S. Manon is French for bitter, um, which I am all about. I mean, that's an awesome name. I like that. That was, I finally know wh where kale comes from. I'm so glad you found a use for those kale, whatever they were. <laughs> yeah, sorry Ooh, about that. I'm excited. All right, this looks cool. Reading through all these stories, I couldn't help but notice a lot of similarities to some of the movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is the Assassin's Blade stories, but as Marvel movies. Also, feel free to chime in because uh, I'm basically going to describe what movie, or like, I guess the plot of some of these stories, and then uh, the movie will follow. But go ahead and guess if you think you know what the movie is going to be. Yeah. First story, The Assassin and the Pirate Lord. This story is about a scheming assassin with twin blades and royal blood who stops a monarch and their minions from enslaving a group of people while covering their ship for an escape. Any guesses as to the movie? The Chronicles of Riddick. <laughs> <It's not horrible. laughs> Is it the Black Widow series? No, it's Thor Ragnarok. Here we see uh, the assassin with twin blades and royal blood stopping their monarch with her evil army from enslaving this poor group of people as they escape on their ship. Nice. Next story, the assassin and the healer. This one is about a healer who's lost their abilities, but they meet a stranger in a faraway land and learns to fight from a master of her crafts. Dr. Strange, it's Dr. Strange. It is absolutely Dr. Strange. Dr. Strange lost his ability to heal and do surgery. Goes off to Kathmandu and meets uh, the ancient one where he learns how to fight. <laughs> Next story is The Assassin and the Desert. Here, the hero confidently travels to the desert, meets a wise master who aids him in gaining new power. Betrayed by a former friend and left alone in the waste, the hero returns to face their well-armored foe. Iron Man, it's, it's Iron Bill. Man! <laughs> <laughs> it is Iron Man! Here we are. The hero confidently travels to the desert, meets the master who aids him in gaining the power. Betrayed by the former friend, <laughs> left alone in the waste. <laughs> Only to face the well-armored foe, and he strikes like a snake. He uses—he's much smaller than a, a 
the Obadiah here, he's able to get in underneath the armor, just like in the uh, the battle against uh, Ansel. Who oh. I don't know if we actually said she was wearing all this like massive armor. I don't think Tony Smart is an app assassin. I don't think he's reached that level. Okay, okay. Next, the assassin in the underworld. In this story, a warrior of a secretive group wearing an all black suit takes on a mission, only to find out their enemy has tricked them into accomplishing their own evil goals instead. Black Panther? Uh, or or that, the movie where he first is introduced and they blow up the UN? Uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's uh, Stone. This one was <laughs> Spider Man Homecoming. <laughs> A warrior for an all in part of a secret society. And he's tricked by his enemy into accomplishing his own evil goals. Here in this movie, Spider Man is into giving Mysterio the, uh, the glasses. Uh, just like how in the, in the story, Selena is tricked into, uh, I guess, promoting the slave trade instead of defeating it. I would just like to say that Black Panther was tricked into trying to kill Bucky Barnes, and he wears a black suit. And really, it was just that, um, I forget the other guy. Yes, you caught on. This was also a bit of a trick, because uh, like Black Widow also kind of fits the story, too. This is a very... <laughs> in our final story, the assassin in the Empire. In this story, a notorious assassin who fights with blades, has an abusive master who raised her as a child, fails in her mission, and is sent to the most inescapable prison in the land. Any guesses? It's Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh. Here, Gamora, the notorious assassin raised by Thanos, <laughs> fails in her mission to capture the uh, Infinity Stone from uh, Peter Quill and is sent to the space prison. Or later she escapes, then turns on her former master. But that's for future stories. There's one final note. Uh, I like to maybe look at Black Widow and consider some of the love interests. And maybe get some feedback <laughs> here. Like, like who, who's Kale in, in here? Who's Dorian? Who's Sam? Who knows? And that's it. Um, Hawkeye is definitely not a love interest. They are best buds. If anything, Hawkeye's like Gehemia or Ansel. Who's the Very Hulk? Good one. <laughs> is Kale the Hulk? You have both the Hulk and Bruce Banner. <laughs> Very different. <laughs> <laughs> They're different people, okay? I don't know, man. Okay, that was awesome. I think Kale would be the Hulk. That was funny. I was thinking like Captain America would be Dorian, uh, Sam would be Hawkeye, because they like both go on assassinate, assassination missions together, and uh, like Kale would be the Hulk. Michael's. Uh... DTL was very thought-provoking. We're going to learn how to move like a snake based on the move like a snake videos I found on, on YouTube. Okay, so we're going to teach you how to move like a snake today, just like the mute master taught Selena. So the first step, you got to make sure you have your base move down. Okay, you were gonna, you're going to carry the base move through everything that you do. So beginner, just move your hips back and forth. You want to keep your feet together. You can do some slight knee bend movement, um, but don't get too crazy. And if you want to do advanced, you can add a slight dip. <laughs> Just like that. You guys are doing great. Got the beginner, and then you can try advanced. <laughs> add a little dip to it. <laughs> good, good. So that's going to be your base move. Don't forget that. The second step that we're going to learn, there's going to be several multi-steps here, are going to be different hand movements you need to know, OK? So this one is you're going to keep your base moves going throughout. And you're going to do one hand to the forehead and think kind of like a lazy salute type of situation. There you go, you guys are doing great. Clayton also has maybe a hand on a tip. That's that's nice, that's good, that's okay, you can do that. Similar to the first hand movement, this one is two hands to the forehead. 
while you're doing your base move. So think it's too bright out here. That's the tip for you. Great, you guys are doing awesome. You're gonna be moving like the snake in no time. Next movement, hands on the hips while you do your base move. Like it, like it, looking great. Okay, the next hand movement, this one's really fun. You're gonna wave your hands above you. Think like those car dealership inflatables. That's kind of what you want your hands to be. It's all, all in the wrist movement. <laughs> Can you just be inflatable? <laughs> Looking great. <laughs> okay, maybe that was a poor tip, but you guys, I think you're getting it. You're getting it. <laughs> This one similar, but the hands remain below. There you go. Perfect. You guys are doing great. Don't be afraid to do freestyle movements in there every once in a while. Keep, keep the same spirit of the snake, but you may need to use these freestyle movements to get away from your threat. There's, all right, so we're just going to redo this one. So next step is freestyle movements. You may at times need to use freestyle movements to get away from your threats, but keep the spirit of the snake. So don't be afraid to throw in a little freestyle move. <laughs> okay. Now, step four is practice. So just get comfortable using those movements from those three steps. And you should be able to pull from any of them at any time, create combinations at a moment's notice. So that's kind of the goal. I'm going to bring up um, how we're going to practice here. And this is also where I used the, um, this is directly from the source for how I learned how to move like a snake. Okay, so. Um, so. So congrats, you guys have just passed the Mute Masters class and you've learned how to move like a snake. <laughs> well, that was awesome. I'm going to say, Christine, you win most interactive, just generally most interactive, most healthy. I'm going to say most fun. Michael, I'm going to say Michael wins the pop culture award, We're testing our trivia abilities which uh, obviously I've got a lot of Marvel movies to watch here. And then Katie's, I'm going to say the most practical that we're probably going to have to use a similar naming convention for our children whenever we get to that stage of life. Well, what's, uh, so what's next? Next up on the docket is Queen of Shadows. I'm excited already. Queen of the Glass, Queen of the Shadows. It's going to be good. All right, I'm going to say one thing. We need to invest in a better microphone for Michael. I think we should just pull together some money as a team and get Michael a better microphone here. If you have details, share them with us. Like us, subscribe to our podcast on Spotify. Don't do that. Do it on YouTube. Bye, guys. Bye. Yeah, sure. Bye.